Chicago Blackhawks are back on the ice for practice following the NHL All-Star break, and there is a ton to discuss on both the injury and the trade front. I'll get into all of that, plus an update on top prospect Frank Nazar right here on Locked On Blackhawks. Your Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Blackhawks podcast. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman2, or you could also go and check out my strictly Blackhawks account at Talkin' Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. Real quick, you know the drill. If you're a consistent listener of the show, or if you're a first time listener checking out the podcast, please. Make sure to go show and show some support if you like what you're hearing today. Make sure to go and follow the podcast wherever you get your podcasts, 100% for free. And also make sure to go subscribe on YouTube. Every episode is going to have a video uploaded to YouTube each and every day. So it only makes sense to go and subscribe to the channel. Also, for those who still may be unaware, I'll be giving away two free Blackhawks tickets to a game sometime here in the second half of the regular season. As of right now, it's looking like it's going to be March 28th against the Dallas Stars. And all you have to do in order to qualify is you have to either leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. And you're also going to want to make sure to drop the name of your YouTube channel in that review because the second thing you have to do is you have to subscribe to Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube. You have to do both in order to qualify for those two free tickets. So please make sure to go do all of that. While you're checking out the YouTube channel, do me a favor, go and smash the like button down below on today's video. Comment down below is how you're feeling about the Blackhawks as we have now surpassed the NHL All-Star break. And last, go and ring the bell, turn on those push notifications, and that way you can get notified when the episode gets uploaded to YouTube each and every day. All right, enough of that. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all again for joining me on another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, your one-stop shop for all things Chicago Blackhawks. And thanks again for making the show your very first listen here to start off your week. We're back in action, folks. The Chicago Blackhawks have returned to practice the last couple of days. They're actually in the middle of practice right now as I'm recording today's episode uh, after they had their nice little eight, nine-day break with the NHL All-Star Game going on over the weekend. Uh, by the way, want to give a nice quick shout-out to Seth Jones, the lone Blackhawks representative in the NHL All-Star Game. Uh, maybe not the best performance in the hardest shot competition, although uh, I don't think anyone really expected Seth to succeed in that drill. But um, the All-Star Game itself, yeah, Seth Came to play, looked like one of the few guys out there on the ice who actually took some pride in representing his team and being part of the NHL All-Star Game. Nice to see the Blackhawks, or Seth Jones, represent the Blackhawks well. A nice three-point showing for the Central in their opening game of the All-Star break. Um, But yeah, uh, the All-Star Game, folks. We got a problem on our hands. Not very entertaining, really cheesy. I don't know if anyone felt that same way. I just felt like it was so corny and so so forced. There were some cool moments, don't get me wrong. Liber- Roberto Luongo, always lovely to see him. It was cool seeing Sergei Ovechkin out there on the ice. Connor McDavid, thanks for coming. Four for four in nine seconds. It was crazy. But at the same time, it, it, it just felt kind of awkward and boring and forced. And, uh just think it, it it something needs to change in the future for sure to make this thing more fun and watchable and exciting throughout the weekend, not only for us fans, but for the players too. Again, it just feels like it's so forced, like no one or very few players like truly want to be there. I'm sure it's a cool experience all in all, but it, it's just, it's a little bit awkward. And I don't know what the solution is off the top of my head. It's not like I'm given some clear cut um, next thing to do. That's a better idea. No, it's just pretty clear at this point. I mean, Trevor Zegras was tweeting out the snooze emoji because he was falling asleep on Friday night watching the all-star game. That's a problem. NHL. You don't want your uh, big superstars tweeting out that. So yeah, feels like something has to change with the format of the NHL all-star game. Anyways, with the Blackhawks now being back together, as the All-Star game has, or the All-Star break, excuse me, has concluded. Uh, We have a lot of updates to talk about, both on the trade front and on the injury front 
for the Blackhawks. I'll start off with the injury news. Fortunately, it's a lot of good news for us Blackhawks fans. First, Tyler Johnson. Looks like he's going to be able to return to the Blackhawks lineup when they take on the Anaheim Ducks tomorrow night at the United Center. Johnson suffered another ankle injury just prior to the All-Star break against the Los Angeles Kings. Forced him to miss the last three games before the break. Uh, Fortunately, though, it looks like this wasn't a long-term injury like he suffered early on in the season. Just might have tweaked something and, you know, ankle injuries, knee injuries, those things do tend to linger and um, you can suffer the same injury multiple times. And it feels like that's just happened to Johnson every couple of weeks. It's really been the story of his Blackhawks career so far, just really struggling to stay healthy. But at the same time, I, I don't think there's any denying the impact that he makes when he is in the lineup, go and look at the Blackhawks this season with Tyler Johnson in the lineup. They've done a lot of their best work. So Uh, I think it will be big to get a veteran like him back inside the top six, helping out either the first or second line. Sounds like he's going to be good to go tomorrow night when the Blackhawks take on Anaheim. Next, we have Jared Tenorti, who we heard a few weeks ago was going to be on track to return somewhere right around the All-Star break. Uh, Tenorti, I guess, has now had both his bands and screws removed from his mouth after uh, having a facial fracture. I, I think he had to undergo some surgery for that. I know he wasn't able to eat for a couple of weeks there. He was just strictly drinking everything out of a blender. And because of that, lost like 10 to 15 pounds or, or something along those lines. I did hear that Tenorti, uh, once he got the screws and bands removed though, did go and enjoy a nice tasty five guys cheeseburger, which is just delicious and exquisite choice, I would say, for a first meal back for Jared Tenorti. Uh, sounds like he could be playing as soon as Friday night when the Blackhawks take on the Arizona Coyotes. So great to hear some good news on Jared Tenorti, who suffered a couple of real brutal injuries uh, there in December. It will be interesting, though, to see how the Blackhawks handle their blue line when Tenorti does come back, though, because Ian Mitchell still up in the NHL, kind of a tweener as the seventh defenseman in and out of the lineup. When Tenorti comes back fully healthy, uh, it's going to create an even bigger log jam on the blue line, obviously. So very curious to see how the Blackhawks are going to handle that when Jared Tenorti does, in fact, return to the lineup. Uh, Then a couple more. We got Alex Stalock, still not 100% at this point, not taking part in practice, has been doing some individual work. Uh, And because of that, the Blackhawks have once again recalled Jackson Stauber from the Rockford Ice Hogs. But Stalock is hopeful that he will be able to go on the Blackhawks road trip, which starts on Saturday when they take on the Winnipeg Jets. So hopefully there's some nice progression from Stalock here throughout this week, and he'll be able to go on that road trip because, golly, the Blackhawks have just not been able to have their goaltenders where they want them so far this year. They want Jackson Stauver playing in the AHL. Is it awesome that he's been having success at the NHL level through his first two starts? Absolutely. But you know the Blackhawks would prefer him to be developing at a normal rate down in Rockford alongside Arvid Soderbloom. So it would be nice to get Alex Stalock back to give the Blackhawks their ideal one-two tandem at the NHL level. It's been few and far between the amount of time this season that both Mrazek and Stalock have been healthy. So hopefully we will be able to have Alex Stalock on that road trip for the Blackhawks. And then last, Jujar Kara, who probably is the furthest away still from making his return. He's been dealing with a back injury for quite a while now, which also forced him to miss the end of season last year. Uh, We did see Kara on the ice prior to today's practice alongside Alex Stalock. No definitive timetable at this return, but it does look like things are heading in the right direction if he's able to skate. I'm sure we'll have more of an actual idea when Kara would be able to return to the Blackhawks lineup uh, in the next couple of weeks from coach Luke Richardson. Just nice to hear though, that the Blackhawks are starting to get healthier. They've used this all-star break hiatus, whatever you want to call it to their advantage to try and get healthy. If I've learned anything by covering the Blackhawks these last couple of years, you're never going to get a fully healthy squad. That's just the nature of the beast. That is the NHL, but it's nice to see, them get back to normalcy, particularly in that we need Alex Stalock healthy. We want Stauber. We want Soder Bloom down in Rockford. Just hasn't been the case a lot here uh, so far this year. Would like to see more of that in the second half.
All right, there are all the latest injury updates with the Blackhawks returning to practice from the All-Star break. Coming up in just a moment, I will talk about what we are hearing across the NHL right now with the trade deadline being less than a month away. But first, I need to talk to you all about FanDuel. The NFL playoffs have reached the Super Bowl, and we're really stoked to tell you about our new betting partner for Lockdown because they're the biggest sports book in America right now. It's FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, then that's even better because they have so many great ways to make betting on sports super fun and super easy. For new customers, join today to get $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. All you have to do is go and visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to the point spread to player props. Plus, you can even combine all your bets for a chance at a greater payout with the same game parlay feature, all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So football fans, don't miss out. The Super Bowl is less than a week away. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, just wanted to say thanks again to everyone out there for making the show your first listen to start off your day. Now for your second listen, make sure to go check out a very relevant podcast for us Blackhawks fans, which is Lockdown NHL Prospects, your daily podcast covering the next generation of superstars, leading up to the 2023 NHL draft. Plus, you can also get NHL draft rankings and top prospect comparisons for every single team. So make sure to go and check out Locked On NHL Prospects, available on this app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Segment two, let's talk about some of the whispers and rumors that are going on across the NHL right now with the trade deadline quietly being less than a month away, folks. And we've already seen a couple of deals go down here in the past couple of days, most notably Bo Horvat getting traded from the Vancouver Canucks to the New York Islanders, went on to sign an eight by eight extension to remain in Long Island. Uh, We also saw Jacob Megna get traded from the San Jose Sharks yesterday too. So we're now in the midst of deadline season, folks. And Let's talk for a moment about where the Blackhawks stand at this moment. First and foremost, I obviously got to talk about Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane. And we heard probably about a month or so ago now that uh, right around the NHL All-Star break, their agent, Pat Brisson, who represents both Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane, conveniently enough, uh, we heard that he was expected to sit down and have a conversation with the Blackhawks front office. And, you know, now obviously the, the all-star break has passed. It's kind of uh, that time for the Blackhawks to figure out what these two franchise icons want to do. I, it feels pretty likely that, you know, that hiatus away from the ice seems like the perfect time to have a conversation of that magnitude. So, I would expect that the conversation's already been had. If not, then it's going down, you know, within the next couple of days. Uh, Deadline season is here, Blackhawks fans. It's a scary time, but got to make a decision at some point. And I know it's going to be difficult one way or the other. You would just like to think the Hawks know where they stand at this point. Again, as I mentioned, with the deadline being less than a month away, feels pretty likely that the conversation has already gone down and that we're going to get some clarity on this front within the next couple of weeks. I will say, though, we don't have anything concrete. We've only heard some rumors, uh, which, you know, don't have really any substantial ties to them about which way people are leaning. Patrick Kane supposedly is the more likely to go. Jonathan Taves is the one who's more likely to stay. I don't know if any of that's true whatsoever. I've personally always felt like both of them are going to end up waiving their no movement clause to get traded. They're competitors, guys who haven't had a sniff of the Stanley Cup playoffs in far too long. And they deserve, you know, to chase that dream, chase another Stanley Cup as they approach the end of their careers. I mean, time's ticking. Both these guys are in their mid 30s at this point. So. As difficult as it may be to let them go, I think we just have to kind of respect that situation with all they've done for for this franchise in the past. uh, It just really isn't to their benefit to stick around. 
if they do decide to stick around, good for them. I mean, that that's their decision, but I think we just have to respect it one way or another at this point, given the position the Blackhawks are in. But first, for Patrick Kane, talking about these two individually, obviously there's a lot that goes into both of these guys getting traded. They hold all the cards, full no movement clause. They're not going anywhere unless they say so. Uh, but for Kaner, he's obviously the one that's going to generate a lot more interest. Uh, we've heard, you know, the New York Rangers have always kind of felt like the most likely destination for everyone for him to be reunited with Artemi Panarin. But we've also heard, you know, the New Jersey Devils could possibly be in contention. The Toronto Maple Leafs, the Dallas Stars have reportedly been kind of a, a sleeper. Um, there's a lot of teams that are going to be interested in the Patrick Kane sweepstakes. Now, one interesting thing that I do want to want to bring up, Frank Saravalli mentioned this over the all-star break. He said, it feels like it's kind of open knowledge across the NHL right now that Patrick Kane isn't 100% healthy and may in fact need hip surgery or some sort of lower body surgery, uh, either in the off season or, or sometime soon to kind of get him back at that elite level. And it's been pretty clear this season while the Blackhawks don't have Alex to or Dylan Strom to play with him and don't have the same high octane offensive weapons alongside him. He hasn't been playing the best hockey of his career. The numbers are down all across the board. I'm sure. It's been frustrating for Patrick Kane. Um, we haven't heard from the Blackhawks that there's anything, you know, long-term injury wise, and it's probably not beneficial for them to leak news like that at this time, to be fair. Uh, and I did think it was curious when Patrick Kane sat down with Pat Boyle not all that long ago. Boyle mentioned a report of Patrick Kane being shut down for the entire season. And it's not like he he didn't dismiss it immediately, right? He said, kind of thought about his answer and said, no, I don't think we're at that point yet. Just kind of an interesting answer one way or another that he didn't dismiss it completely to be out of the picture. I do feel like there's a good chance that Patrick Kane is dealing with something. And, you know, that that could make other NHL GMs hesitant. Look, Patrick Kane's not going to come cheap regardless of where he goes. I'm guessing either two late first round picks from a contender, meaning the Blackhawks will be picking later on in the twenties uh, or a one first round pick and one high end prospect. I think that's probably the return for Patrick Kane as disappointing as that may be to some of you fans. I think that's just kind of the reality of the situation. I think the Blackhawks are getting two firsts or one first and a high end prospect. But if Patrick Kane's injured, if he's going to need surgery, and if he's not willing to sign an extension, are NHL GMs really going to risk giving up that for a guy who may not be healthy enough to go and win them a Stanley Cup this year? It's something that has to be in mind when uh, Patrick Kane trade conversations are going down as there's so much, there's so many pieces to trading both of these two. It's not going to be an easy feat, but adding a potential injury for Patrick Kane sure, certainly doesn't make it any simpler. So what goes into trading number 88? Uh, again, we still don't have any update if he wants to be traded at this point, but um there's a lot that goes into it, obviously, and I do wonder if that injury talk is going to cause some more hesitation out of NHL GMs. Then for Jonathan Taves, kind of in the same boat. Obviously, though, I, I don't think he has the upside of Patrick Kane at this point in his career, and I don't think there's going to be nearly as many suitors for Jonathan Taves. I've kind of talked about how Colorado Avalanche have always made the most sense to me. They've really been needing a second line center since the departure of Nazem Kadri this offseason. Alex Newhook hasn't been able to kind of grow in that role as they were hopeful he was going to be able to do heading into this year. So I think Colorado could make sense. I think Winnipeg could make sense with them kind of surprising everyone and being one of the best teams in the Western Conference at this point. They could use another depth center. I've personally thought Boston has made a lot of sense. Uh, put Taves and Patrice Bergeron on the same team and you have the deepest two-way uh, center depth in the entire NHL. I think those are the situations that make the most sense for Taves, but it's going to be interesting. I, I don't know how many suitors there are going to be with question marks about him at this point of his career. He is having a bounce back season. He's still the best at the faceoff dot in the entire world, but there's a lot that goes into it too. He's obviously aging. He's had some health concerns. Um, there's a lot that goes into trading tapes too.
at this point, if Taves does wind up wanting to waive his no movement clause, I've heard the Blackhawks are hoping to get a first round pick for him, even if they get a third team involved, which likely has to happen for Taves to get traded anyway. Even if they do get a third team involved, I don't see them getting a first round pick for Jonathan Taves. I think a second and a mid-level prospect maybe is kind of a, a likely return. I saw a second and a third round pick get floated on Twitter not too long ago as well. I think that does make sense. So I think that's kind of uh, what the Blackhawks are looking at right now. Uh, if Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane do wind up waiving their no movement clauses, which as I've mentioned a couple of times now, I expect we'll have some updates on that front within the next couple of weeks. Then after those two, it's just a, slew of Blackhawks players who also could get moved at the deadline. Um, Sam Lafferty is someone who's just been awesome the last couple of weeks. And because of his strong play could wind up getting flipped at the deadline by Kyle Davidson. He's also signed to a, a very team friendly deal guy who you can slot up and down the lineup uh, can provide you with some physicality quietly has some really good wheels. He can play in transition. You know, he's not a top six offensive guy, but if you need some bulk with your skill players, Sam Lafferty can do that. He'll stand up for guys. He's a great teammate. I'm sure he's respected inside the locker room for all the little things that he's willing to do on the ice. And it's been nice to see him finally get rewarded for all of his hard work the last couple of weeks. The only bad side of that is uh, it's, it would be tough to see Sam Lafferty go, no doubt about it. I Love Sam Lafferty, one of my favorite players on the Blackhawks right now. He brings the energy and intensity seemingly every shift, but I think the Blackhawks would have to capitalize on his stonks heading in the right direction these last few weeks. I mean, we've heard uh, Frank Saravalli even write up an article about Sam Lafferty. Who would have thought that's going to happen? I mean, it seems like there is uh, some increasing attention being thrown at Sam Lafferty's way. It feels like a lot of people are taking notice and, you know, teams are always looking for bottom six glue guys to add to their roster. Come playoff time, Lafferty can play both center and wing. He's very versatile, cheap deal. I think it just makes a lot of sense for the Blackhawks to capitalize on his strong play as of late. And if they can get a third or a fourth round pick for Sam Lafferty, I think you have to say yes to that uh, as tough as it would be to see him go kind of the same situation is Jake McCabe. Who's been the shining star of the Blackhawks this season. Um, but the Blackhawks, it feels like because of that strong play and because of how big of a bounce back season he's had, it feels like there's a really good opportunity for the Blackhawks to go and get another first round pick in the 2023 NHL draft by moving Jake McCabe and, that's the goal at this point in time. So yeah, it would suck to see Jake McCabe go a sturdy defensive defenseman who could be a leader on the blue line throughout this rebuild. But if you can get a first round pick for him, I just, I just think you got to do it with that being the name of the game right now for this organization. If they can get four first round picks in the 2023 NHL draft, they already have one could get another for Patrick Kane. If you got a chance to get one for Jake McCabe as tough as it would be, I think Kyle Davidson has to do it. And I kind of feel that same way about Max Domi too. Another guy who's been playing really well for the Blackhawks, but could be traded because of it. Uh, Domi's the leading point getter for the Blackhawks through the all-star break. He's also tied for the team lead in goals. He's been a really awesome center Iceman. I, I think that was a huge concern going into this year is whether he was going to be able to win enough faceoffs. And he's been incredible at the dot this year. And then there's also the sandpaper side to his game. Tough to play against, just a thorn in your side, a pest. He'll scrap and stand up for his teammates. He's physical. He's another guy who can do all the little things well and is proving this year that he can also get it done offensively too. So I think if the Blackhawks get offered a second round pick, they have to say yes to that. And there's also the good chance that, you know, with Domi being a UFA, that the Blackhawks give him a lofty contract offer in the off season and he winds up coming back. I mean, he clearly likes uh, what he, what, ah, he clearly likes being here in Chicago. He likes playing for Luke Richardson, even though the team hasn't found any success at all this season, really Max Domi has been all smiles. He's been enjoying himself. So I do think it is a, a pretty likely scenario that the Blackhawks trade him and then wind up bringing him back in the off season. But yeah, I think, you know, if you get a second round pick for Max Domi, you absolutely have to say yes. And there's a couple other guys, Andreas Athanasiu always has seemed like a trade chip since the Blackhawks signed him. 
Um, middle round pick is probably what he'd get. I'm going to guess a fourth at this point. Hasn't been all that. Uh, I thought if he really took advantage of his opportunity on the top line, there was a chance that the Blackhawks maybe could get a second round pick for him, but he's mostly been in the, the bottom six the last couple of months. Um, I, I do think his game has been better, but still the numbers. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he, I think the Blackhawks would be fortunate to get a third round pick out of Andreas Athens. See uh, One other guy I'm just bringing up for the sake of bringing up Jack Johnson. I, I think the Blackhawks would take future considerations for Jack Johnson at this point. Like I think you have to open up another spot on the blue line in the second half. Jack Johnson's played every game this year. I don't get it. It's time for that to come to an end. Jack, I'm sure you've been a great veteran leader in the locker room. I'm sure you've been excellent, a true uh, pro about everything. It just doesn't make sense for the Blackhawks organization to keep him around in the second half. There's another team showing a drop of interest in Jack Johnson. Go and move him there so we can call up a guy like Philip Ruse or have Ian Mitchell up in the NHL or Jakob Galvis or Isaac Phillips, Alec Regula, Alex Vlasic. There's a ton of defensemen trying to make that jump. Doesn't make sense for Jack Johnson to be the one preventing that from happening. So if there's any interest at all, I think the Blackhawks have to move Jack Johnson. It only makes sense with the direction that the franchise is going. All right. There is all of the latest on what we're hearing as the Blackhawks uh, are less than a month away from the NHL trade deadline. Pretty crazy to say coming up in just a moment. I will also talk for a quick second about a great update on 2022 first round pick Frank Nazar. But first, I need to talk to you all about Athletic Greens and their new AG1 product, which is something that I use every single morning because with just one scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and more to help you start your day. And this special blend of ingredients truly is incredible, folks. It helps support your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, your focus, and even your aging. It helps everything you can think of. And Athletic Greens was first created when the founder themselves experienced a ton of gut issues and ended up on a complicated supplement routine in order to recover. That used to cost them over $100 per day. But now Athletic Greens has created both an optimal and affordable nutrition routine that'll cost you less than $3 per day, which is such a cheap and easy way to invest in both your health and your body. And I'm not kidding, folks. I do get my one scoop of AG1 every single morning, whether it's before I go to work or before I'm coming on the show, before I'm going and hitting the golf course with my buddies. I want to make sure I have that extra edge and make sure I'm ready to go every single morning to be on my best. I really do feel the difference when I get my one scoop of AG1. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D along with five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do is go and visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health to pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, before I wrap up the show for today, folks, let's talk for a quick second about some positive news that we heard over the NHL All-Star break about the 13th overall pick in the 2022 NHL draft. My boy, Frank the Tank, Frank Nazar. Of course, Frank the Tank has yet to play for the Michigan Wolverines this season due to a lower body injury that he suffered Sometime in the fall, still kind of a, a real vague injury for Nazar. We knew it was lower body. We knew that it required surgery. Other than that, didn't really get any updates. But fortunately, uh, it sounds like Nazar is really making some significant progress here. As Mich Michigan reportedly uh, is optimistic that he is going to be able to play sometime before the end of the season. And Oh, that is just lovely news because after seeing what Nazar did at Blackhawks development camp during the summer, I mean, it, it was just such a crushing blow to hear that he was going to miss potentially all of his freshman season. I mean, watching this kid play, I heard about, you know, the skill set and what he provides despite being um, a shorter and smaller player. I heard about it, but watching it in person was something completely different. I mean, this kid has an incredible skill set. First off, the speed is fantastic. For a center iceman, he's kind of transitioned to center over the last couple of years. 
The Blackhawks haven't had a forward with that kind of pace. Lucas Reichel can play with it. I would say Nazar is an even better skater. I mean, I, I can't recall the Blackhawks having a forward who could skate this well. It was so evident. He can buzz up and down the ice. Plays the game at a very high speed, a really gifted playmaker. I would say he's probably more of a pass first guy than a goal scorer, but don't get it twisted. This kid has a really sneaky good wrist shot as well, and, and he could blow it by you. So just the complete package that is Frank Nazar, that offensive skill set to go along with the hustle, the speed, the work ethic, the tenacity. Doesn't He's not scared to go into any battle, front of the net, along the boards. He plays with a chip on his shoulder. If anything, being a smaller player kind of drives him to those areas and what you know kind of makes him thrive and, and feel like uh, he can be a true difference maker is he's not scared of any situation. He doesn't let his size hinder any part of his game. He's also a really heck of a gifted offensive player as well. So, yeah, it, it was um, really inspiring, I guess, is how I would put it, to see Frank Nazar, Nazar and all the work that he was doing in the summer. Yeah, there hasn't been a forward prospect in the Blackhawks system, I think, with that type of skill set in quite some time. And, you know, we were thinking he was going to go and play a massive role for the University of Michigan alongside Adam Fantilli, who could possibly be another Blackhawks prospect here sometime over the summer. Um I was really excited to see what Frank the Tank was going to be able to do in that situation on one of the most talented teams in all of college hockey. Expected to play a really big role there. Yeah, it was just a crushing blow to hear him suffer that lower body injury back in the fall. But yeah, it looks like Nazar is going to be back here sometime uh, to help Michigan finish up strong down the stretch. So I hope that things continue to go well for my boy Frank the Tank. He really seems like he has the potential to be an awesome player, someone who I think a lot of Blackhawks fans could fall in love with. Uh, it would be really awesome to see him back in action down the stretch of the season to help out the Michigan Wolverines. All right, folks, I think that is going to wrap up Monday, February 6th episode of Locked On Blackhawks. Make sure if you're not already to go and follow the show for 100% for free wherever you get your podcast and go and subscribe to Locked On Blackhawks on YouTube you can get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each and every day. Once again, thank you all for tuning into the show. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman2, or you could also go and check out my strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. So until tomorrow's episode, that's going to do it here for the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.